Hello, everyone. Welcome to our virtual alumni panel, and thank you for tuning in with us across the country. We are very excited to bring to you four of our esteemed alumni. But before we get started, I wanted to actually thank the University of Minnesota Alumni Association on their partnership to bring you this alumni panel. The University of Minnesota Alumni Association works to engage over a half a million alumni each year throughout their initiatives, one of which is through alumni webinars. And this is our first time partnering to talk to some prospective students regarding why the University of Minnesota should be a part of their college choice process. So thank you to all of our prospective students who have tuned in to participate in this panel uh, from across the nation. We'll go ahead and get started with a few introductions. I have four alumni here, all from different areas of the country that are excited to share their experiences with you. Kit, we'll go ahead and get started with you. Hello, my name is Kitrick Myers. Uh, I am from Grand Island, Nebraska, and I majored in kinesiology. I also have a master's in applied kinesiology with an emphasis in sport management. I graduated, uh, did I say 2005? And my master's was in 09, and I am really excited to be here today. Hello, I'm Katie Augsburger. I am from Dubuque, Iowa. Uh, I graduated in 2017 with a degree in biochemistry from the College of Biological Sciences. And I think that's it. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Desiree Zimmerman. I am from Walnut Creek, California. I graduated in 2004 from the College of Liberal Arts. I majored in English literature as well as communication with emphasis on speech. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ben Koch. I graduated from the university in 2004 with a degree in aerospace engineering and mechanics. Uh, I'm originally from Abingdon, Virginia, a small town near the Tennessee border. Uh, I also came back to the University of Minnesota years later and finished a master's degree in mechanical engineering uh, in 2010. Great, thank you everyone. And my name is Ashley Harville and I work with the University of Minnesota Office of Admissions as the Associate Director for National Recruitment. I myself am also a proud alumna of the University of Minnesota, a 2004 graduate from the College of Liberal Arts in Communication Studies, and I also had a Leadership Studies minor. Now we'll go ahead and jump into questions. So let's get started with majors. If you all wouldn't mind sharing briefly with us how you chose your major and whether or not you knew that you wanted to major in that area of study prior to coming to college. Okay? Sure. Uh, so my undergraduate degree is kinesiology. And as I said, my master's is also applied kinesiology sport management. Uh, I always wanted to be a phi ed teacher. And like by the age of 13 or 14, I knew that. And so uh, when it became time to look at colleges and universities, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I had a pretty good idea where I wanted to go. And while I don't use that degree, um, I do use other degrees. Uh, so my major was biochemistry, um, and I had kind of decided on that in high school. I took a um, summer course at uh, Brown University a while back uh, in high school in the summer. It's like a two-week thing where I got to do some lab experiments and learn about biology, um, and that really sparked my interest in research science and biology, so that is how I decided. Yeah, I had a pretty good idea I wanted to do English at least as one of my majors or programs. I loved literature, writing, poetry, um, also loved the communication program. Um, and once I started taking courses and had those first couple years to take a really wide variety, I think it solidified it a, a little more. I always knew that engineering or some sort of math or science was going to be uh, my major of choice uh, in terms of which field of engineering. That was something that was fairly undecided as I came into the university. Um, but then after exploring and having different course experiences, uh, I knew that aerospace engineering was going to be a good fit for me, uh, at least for my undergraduate degree. As I mentioned, I came back later and finished a, a master's degree in mechanical engineering just to expand uh, the view that I have uh, of the field. 
Great, wonderful, thank you. And I actually had no idea what I wanted to study when I came to the University of Minnesota. And in fact, my academic counselor put an academic hold on my record to make me come in to declare my major during my junior year. I was perfectly content staying in college for the rest of my life. <laughs> However, that was not an option for the University of Minnesota. So they actually made sure that I was academically successful and graduated within four years without any issues. And communicative study, stu communication studies ended up being a perfect major for me. So let's talk a little bit more about academic classes. Ben, can you tell us a little bit about your favorite class and why? Uh, my favorite class in undergraduate uh, was actually a mechanical engineering class, uh, Intro to Mechanical Engineering. Uh, it's a 2000-level 2000, uh, 2000 course, so it's a sophomore-level course where students are first uh, you know, shown uh, engineering disciplines and engineering uh, principles. It involves a lot of uh, design and, and uh, manufacturing, uh, talking about the design process and actually building and manufacturing uh, a small robot that would operate for about a minute or so, which is showcased at the end of the semester in a large robot show here on campus, actually in this very building in the McNamara Alumni Center. Uh, and so that was one of my favorite courses because it gave me my first experiences in design and uh, fabrication, manufacturing, uh, and really showed me more of engineering. I, I had several classes I really loved, but I took an upper level poetry course I had this professor two times. He is incredible. He'd been at the U of M for decades, written books. Um, and I had him for two courses, different poetry courses. And there were eight and 12 students in those two classes I had with him. We sat at a round table and um, it was a really amazing experience to feel like I was learning from someone really brilliant, but I just got to sit at a table with him three days a week. Uh, my favorite class was a, actually a genetics class called molecular genetics. I took it uh, my last year of college, and it was really great because there was no there was no textbook. We everything we learned, everything we discussed, was all based on extremely current research that was going on. So I got to stay up to date with current molecular genetic research, um, and then that course, because of all the the new research you were talking about, really sparked my interest into what I would like to study in, in graduate school. Uh, for my favorite two courses, um, it's kind of a toss-up between biomechanics and exercise physiology. Both allowed for a lot of time as a test subject. I, I love to volunteer, go up in front of the class, um, be putting weird things, uh, body fat checking, including going underwater, all kinds of things like that. But uh, those are academic classes. As a non-academic class, because of my kinesiology major, I took several FIAD courses. I actually took snowboarding at the University of Minnesota um, down in Bloomington. Love that class, half a semester, snowboarded once a week, every week, amazing. <laughs> so for our students chiming in from Colorado, you will still have a lot of ample opportunity to go skiing and snowboarding for those of you that love to have that hobby. Staying on the subject of academics, how were your professors approachable? Were they approachable? Were they easy to access? And what were some ways in which you built relationships with your professors at a Big Ten institution? Katie, do you want to start? Sure. Um, I thought all of my professors were really approachable. No one, none of the professors ever wanted you to do poorly in their class. They all want to wanted to spark the same interest that they had in the subject in their students so i spent a lot of time in office hours in a few of my upper level science classes as well as some of the french classes i took um, and not only was i able to get the help that i needed i was also be able to foster great relationships with the professors that i had i'll be honest i really struggled my first couple of years um, trying to approach professors i was you know they're way up here and i'm way down here and then as you get more and more used to the university and talking with professors and kind of segueing with TAs first, um, it becomes, becomes a lot easier. Um, and in fact, that biomechanics class that I mentioned, we created a gang. We had a, we did this X, Y, and Z access to the point where we would walk down the street and see each other and flash it. And I mean, we still laugh about that to this day if I see them. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I'm just drawing a blank on what I was just about to say. I had, um, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would agree with Dietrich in the fact that I also struggled in those first few years to kind of uh, 
feel comfortable speaking with faculty members who had PhDs and had such great uh, research backgrounds and, and certainly great uh, academic backgrounds and, and trying to build that confidence. But as the years wore on and as I felt it more necessary to go to office hours, to ask questions about homework assignments, to ask questions about uh, exam preparation, things like that, it became slowly easier to, to do that. And so by the end of my college career, it was very natural and very comfortable to, to do that and to approach them, specifically in their office hours occasionally after class, uh, certainly by email, things like that was was very easy to do. So again, it's, it's an acquired skill, so to speak, in terms of being able to uh, feel comfortable in that environment, but I would encourage that sooner rather than later, by all means. I remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I, um, I looked at small small colleges, liberal arts colleges, larger universities, and I think you always hear at a larger school, maybe you're more of a number or the classes are so huge. And I really found that to be false. Um, some of the larger classes where you may be in a smaller auditorium or something, you have professors' contact information. I was reaching out to them. I was talking to them. I was getting to know them. And then in these classes where I had eight, 12, 20 students, and you're talking to them before or after class in their office, it really was amazing to me. Coming from out of state, wondering what a larger institution would be like to have such complete access to professors and to my academic advisor who I met with before every term. Great, thank you everyone. So leading off of Desiree's comment about coming from out of state, what were some different activities that your colleges did maybe to help you get acclimated once you started your freshman year? Perhaps, Katie, would you like to tell us about Welcome Week and uh, Nature of Life? Um, so specifically before I even uh, got to the university in August, uh, CBS does this thing called Nature of Life, um, and they basically bring every CBS incoming freshman up to uh, Lake Itasca uh, in northern Minnesota uh, for like three or four days, and we explore nature, uh, we learn the rouser, we get to kind of get a taste of a college experience before getting to college, um, as well as connecting with fellow CBS students, which was a fantastic uh, experience for me. Um, I moved in first day freshman year and I already knew three or four people in my dorm and it was great because I could kind of connect with them and start building better friendships from nature of life. Um, on top of that, we also did uh, welcome week which um, was basically a, about a, a week um, right before classes started where they really took time to get us all acclimated to university. Um, there were tons of amazing activities. Um, there was Explore U where we got to uh, visit some of the campus resources we have and uh, there were like businesses giving out coupons and student groups handing out flyers to have them join, have you join them. Um, as well as uh, CBS did like a scavenger hunt day for us. So I got to go around and uh, basically answer a bunch of questions that we got answers for from like different CBS resources and my team won. So we got a $20 bookstore gift card. That was really fun. Um, so I do really think um, those kinds of things really help get everyone connected and acclimated to the university early on. One thing for me that really was a difference maker in my first year uh, and beyond really uh, was living in the residence halls on campus and being a part of those communities where uh, you have your in-class hours, of course, you have your you know extracurriculars, but really the residence halls are where you're coming back to every night. Uh, you have your roommate, potentially, you have your next door neighbors and, and your other community members there. That really made the difference for me in feeling comfortable uh, and feeling connected. Uh, I still have great friendships with uh, most of those people that I lived either with or next to uh, during those first few years uh, and, uh, and see them on a regular basis, can uh, contact them uh, and have good conversations with them still. So that was really a major part for me in terms of feeling comfortable here, coming from out of state, uh, being a part of this uh, Big Ten environment and, and having those uh, friendships immediately off the bat uh, where I was living. And yeah, getting involved again in student activities is so easy. There are so many to choose from. And I was in everything from, you know, on a softball team to the Chicano Latino student organization to a writing poetry club. It's just really easy. Had a, a job, a couple of jobs on and near campus, which was really easy. And some of my closest friends today are friends I lived with my first year, were in activities with um, and had jobs with. Perfect. 
Kit, would you like to chime in? Yeah. So now they do the welcome week. Uh, before that became a thing, they had new student weekend. I participated in that. Looks like nodding heads. So yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that was a great way to meet a few people, to figure out how you're going to get involved, um, which led me to really being involved. And my new student weekend leader was in a fraternity. Um, so I rushed that fraternity and this is back before it was really formal back then it was semi-formal or informal and you just kind of hung out, but I went to two or three fraternities and got a bid from a couple of them and joined. And so that was how I really got involved. Uh, joining a fraternity allowed me to meet, uh, members of sororities and other fraternities. And that led me into becoming a university cheerleader. Um, so it was a cheerleader for a year, uh, being a cheerleader and then you meet the dance team, you meet the mascots. And so I made a huge university, really small. And then made it bigger and bigger as I saw fit for myself. Perfect. Thank you. And for those of you who are interested in getting involved in student organizations, whether you're looking at getting involved with Greek life or perhaps you're looking at getting involved in some of our other 900 student organizations, we actually do a large fair at the beginning of every year that introduces all the different student organizations to our incoming first year students, as well as for all of our other students who are looking to expand their opportunities for involvement throughout their course of their academic career here at the University of Minnesota. Katie, do you want to speak a little bit more about some of the things that you were involved in? Sure. Um, so I also uh, ended up joining a Greek organization, um, which was a really great choice for me, um, especially coming from out of state. Not a lot of people from Iowa come up to Minnesota, so I uh, really, really enjoyed being able to kind of find a small home within the large university, as Kit was saying. Um, on top of that, I was also a member of the, uh, it was, it's now called SARC, SRC. I don't remember what it used to be called, um, but it's a, like a biology research group. So they get together once a week and have pizza and beverages and soda and whatever, um, and talk about uh, recent, current research that's going on and also have uh, professors come and talk. Um, and they also do a lot of prep for graduate school. So I think a couple weeks ago, at the very end of this past semester, they did a um, panel for uh, people who wanted to apply for PhD programs, which is really cool. Great, thank you, awesome. Speaking of research, Katie and Ben, I know both of you participated in some research opportunities through your college. I'd love for you to elaborate a little bit more on those, Ben. So when I was an undergraduate here, uh, I was searching for undergraduate jobs uh, on campus. And, and one of the jobs that I held for a number of years uh, was in an undergraduate or a, a graduate research lab, working with graduate students and faculty members on their research uh, in mechanical engineering. Uh, the lab that I worked with was the particle technology lab. So it had a lot to do with the nanoparticles and filtration. Uh, and so with the research that I was assisting with, it was really working with graduate students and their ongoing experiments. Uh, providing support for them uh, and really assisting them in uh, in their process uh, and making sure that everything that they were doing was working correctly and appropriately, making sure that they had uh, the appropriate um, uh, parts and logistics met uh, and making sure that everything was running smoothly. Uh, and I held that position for uh, three or so years uh, and really met some wonderful mentors through that, both faculty members as well as graduate students to see exactly uh, that field and being able to explore a field and, and uh, part of engineering that I would not have otherwise known about or explored. Uh, so it was definitely a wonderful experience to have that experience, to be able to see that uh, at a different level and understand what was right with uh, what was right for me and what might not be a good fit for me in terms of my career. And Katie, would you like to elaborate on yours? Yes. Um, so I got a research position uh, in my lab my freshman year through a connection actually with my AP Chem teacher from high school. It was really really crazy. Um, but so I worked in the same research lab all four years of undergrad. Um, it's a genetics lab where we do research on proteins in the flagella of an algae. Um, and my lab is really small, so we don't have any grad students or postdoctoral uh, fellows. We just have my PI, my faculty member in charge, um, and then a couple of lab techs and a couple of undergrads. So I really got to establish a very close relationship with the faculty member in charge of my research. Um, and then because there were no grad students working on thesis projects, I got to have projects for myself, which was really a really great experience uh, and something that I ended up being really lucky um, finding. So, and then after, after I graduated, I ended up uh, continuing my position there. Um, so I'm still currently working there as a lab tech. Um, and I can definitely say, 
research experience really helped me in my career. Um, I applied to graduate school this past fall, um, and I am going to be attending UCSF uh, in a genetics and molecular biology PhD program this fall. Um, and I can definitely say that my research experience was one of the biggest factors in um, being able to get into a research program like this. Um, that experience really shows them that, you know, I know what I'm getting into. I know kind of the trials and tribulations of a career in research. Um, and I think it was a very, very, very good experience for me. Perfect. And for those of you that don't know what UCSF is, that's the University of California, San Francisco. So congrats, Katie, on your admission to your PhD program there. Kit, now I understand you didn't necessarily do research with your major, but your major really required some excellent internships and you had quite an opportunity for that. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your internship? Sure. So as an undergrad, um, because I was kinesiology, you know, physical education and coaching, I ended up at a couple of elementary schools and then Minneapolis South High School, um, working with FIED, health and whatnot and, and developmental adapted FIED, which led me into a coaching uh, track and field at Minneapolis South and then a couple of other high schools, um, the Academy of Angels and uh, Minneapolis Washburn. So I coached track and cross country for a number of years. Um, as an undergrad, or as a graduate student rather, um, I had an internship at the Baseline Tennis Center over here at the University of Minnesota, um, ran a, uh, a small scale tennis event. And then I also interned for the, I don't know if it's still this anymore, the McNamara Academic Center, it's called something else now, but it's for student athletes. And I worked specifically with football players um, helping make sure that they were uh, on track to graduate, that they were passing all their classes. Um, I did a little bit of help with uh, basketball, men's and women's as well. But both those were really great internships. Allowed me to see that, hey, I think there's a future for me coming back, hopefully, to the University of Minnesota and working with football academics. I, I really enjoyed myself, and it gave me an opportunity to uh, further expand uh, my network of people who I knew and I could trust and would trust me to do work. Great, thank you, Kit. And we actually have Maria Jaramillo here from the University of Minnesota Office of Admissions. She is our Assistant Director of Admissions and behind the scenes. And she has a couple questions from some of our participants. One, qu One question from the group is, could you elaborate a little bit more on if you were involved in sports? Did you play sports at a club level, intramural level, just for fun? Perfect, thank you. We'll go ahead and have Desi do that. Uh, I actually played intramural and my younger sister who graduated five years ago did club softball. But of course, division one, but there are so many club sports. There are so many intramural sports. There are so many different levels from, you know, just wanting to do it really for fun once a week to those that are doing it really competitively, even non at the D1 level. Um, how many? sport. I mean, there are so many ways to get involved with it. So yeah, I did intramural sports here and it was a very easy. And I know Kit, you did a few as well too. Yeah. Uh, so I did, because I was in a fraternity, I did Greek league football. I did basketball. Um, I was a member of the badminton club for a semester, which was a lot of fun. I totally got lost by everybody killed me, but it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I was a, a university cheerleader. So that's it. That's a division one. We compete at nationals for uh, University Cheerleading Association down in Florida. Um, and that was a that was a great opportunity as well. So if you get that opportunity to watch that, that's really good. And then again, because I knew the dance team, our dance team was really starting to pick it up for themselves at that time. And so we were able to see them become national champions, which was really cool as well. And let me just mention quickly watching the sports. I've had season go for football tickets since my first year here. I still have them today, and it is the most amazing atmosphere. So go to all of them, too. Perfect. Katie or Ben, would you like to chime in? I would just second uh, Desiree's comment. Definitely go for fan. Not much of an athlete myself, but going to all the different athletic events, uh, you know, students receive great discounts for those season tickets uh, for football amongst uh, hockey and basketball and all the others. Uh, so again, definitely a major go for sports fan as a student and certainly now uh, as an adult and as an alum, 
uh, definitely maintaining those season football tickets as well uh, and being able to go to TCF Bank Stadium here. But even if you're not an athlete and not competitive, but certainly looking for that athletic outlet, uh, there are plenty of options for that as well, be it uh, pickup games that might happen on the mall or in some of the athletic fields nearby. Uh, the Rec and Wellness Center here on campus has a great uh, facility for those of you just looking to keep up with your own fitness. Uh, but again, plenty of options for whatever level of athlete that you might be, be it very casual to very competitive. Uh, there are certainly avenues for you uh, to participate. I mean, like like Ben, I was not an athletic soul. <laughs> Sports were not my thing. Um, I did have a number of friends who played intramural sports. Um, I know there was a Greek flag football team that my sorority participated in, and we had a team that loved to get together and do that. Um, and yeah, I'm a I'm a huge Gopher football fan, so I will go to all the games and support my team all the way. Okay, great. And for those of you that are looking to be a fan outside of our 23 Division I athletics or any of our intramural or club sports, we are a hub here in Minneapolis-St. Paul for six professional sports teams from men and women's professional basketball to hockey to baseball to the NFL, and then of course also our professional soccer team as well. All of those stadiums are accessible via our light rail system and go direct, that goes directly through campus. So it's really easy for our students to participate in athletic events both on and off campus. Speaking of what you do in your part time or in your in your off time as a student, what were some other things that you did? You know, what were what was your life like as a student? Who would like to go first? So I lived in Dinky Town, and how do I explain? It's about a 20 by 20 block radius on attached to campus. It's apartments, houses, restaurants, just really neat places to hang out, music venues. Um, I loved living there. Even if I wasn't on campus, I was still living very close, and it was really easy to get around. I'd get to my classes, to all my extracurriculars, to my job, just about everything from walking or hopping on one of the U of M shuttles. Um, and so it really was the whole four years, just really easy and really so much to do. I would agree. Uh, the Twin Cities is very easily accessible uh, from campus. It's been mentioned, of course, the light rail transit that we have that runs through campus. But the other bus systems, if you should be uh, one who owns a car on campus, it's very accessible to, of course, drive to these places. When I was a student, uh, live music venues were all over uh, and certainly still are. Uh, and so that was a, a favorite pastime of mine. Uh, I mentioned sporting events, you know, going downtown uh, to watch the Minnesota Twins uh, in the summer or in the early fall uh, um, and certainly late uh, spring was always fun as well. Uh, but so much culture as well in the Twin Cities, uh, whether it be theater, uh, again, music, like I mentioned, uh, restaurants and food, uh, so much of that to explore and to do. Uh, I'm somewhat disappointed that I didn't do much of that uh, as an undergraduate student, just on a student's budget. But as I've grown older and it had the means, it's been something something that I've enjoyed, uh, but definitely very accessible, very easy, and plenty of options depending on what it is you might be yourself interested in. I, yeah, so I loved the cultural hub that Minneapolis is. Um, the, there's so much good food, so many good shows. Um, I know that I and a handful of my friends have all um, taken advantage of the student rush tickets that are offered by the theaters downtown. Um, so they're usually announced, usually last minute tickets, um, but if you show up, it's like two hours ahead of time, you can get like 20 or 25, $30 tickets for touring Broadway shows, which is really fun. Um, and something I've also liked to do, and I've started to do a lot more since I've graduated, is uh, take advantage of the lakes that are in the middle of the city. <laughs> um, so I, I like to go down to like the BD Makasa North Beach and just kind of hang out on the beach and go swimming and enjoy having water in the middle of the city. I'm glad you said that lake name because I, I can't say that yet. Um, we still, I still call it Lake Calhoun, unfortunately, but I worked really hard to get myself lost. I bought a bicycle and I took trails or side streets and just tried to uh, get as far away from the U as I could and believe in myself that I could still return to the U uh, without it being past nightfall. Um, and, and I was successful over and over again. Uh, occasionally I did have to stop and ask um, a random citizen for some help to like which way is the U again? And and I loved it. I, I found the lakes, I found the sculpture garden, um, I found theaters, I buzzed up and down the downtown district and got myself into uptown. Um, and you can bike all the way out to Western suburbs. I know I never biked out to Eastern suburbs, but I know biking out to the Western suburbs uh, wasn't an issue at all. 
Perfect. Thank you. And a couple things that were touched on or actually our theater district. We actually have the second most theater seats per capita, second to New York City. And as Katie mentioned, we do have a lot of Broadway shows that do arrive here. Uh, we are a Broadway test market and we are anxiously awaiting Hamilton coming this fall. And let me tell you, I have tickets and I cannot wait. So speaking a little bit about just accessibility, it sounds like some of you had an opportunity to live both on and off campus. So if you can tell us a little bit about your experience living on campus and what it was like living in the residence halls, and then where, as well as what quote unquote off campus looks like distance and so forth. Who would like to start? Uh, so I lived in Pioneer Hall my freshman year, part of the Superblock. Absolutely loved it, um, had a fantastic time. Um, I didn't learn the buses. I didn't want to. I wanted to walk. I wanted to learn things. So that was a lot of fun. And then I spent three and a half years living at the fraternity house. Um, loved that experience as well. And I lucked out. My fraternity is across the street from Sanford Residence Hall. And so I had a meal plan uh, for two and a half of the three and a half years I lived at the house, which was great. Um, food, the, the way that the food works, at least it worked then. I don't know how it works now, but it was I get as much as you wanted. And so I would always eat and then have a sandwich to take with me, but that was really fantastic. And then um, I lived in kind of just in between downtown and uptown in the Lorian Park District. Uh, that was a great time as well. Uh, easily accessible um, to the university uh, via 94 and 35. And I lived there through graduate school and a couple years later, and then I lived in um, Stone Arch Apartments as well. So just on the far side of 35W. So everything was really close, bikeable and whatnot. Uh, so I lived in the dorms my freshman year. I lived in Frontier Hall, which is another part of Super Black. Um, and I specifically lived in one of the living learning communities. Are they still called that? Okay. Um, called the Biohouse. So it was a bunch of mostly CBS students, um, all freshmen who wanted to kind of live together with people who were taking the same classes and doing the same things. So that was a great way to connect with people to be, I mean, just people in general to make friends and also people who are in my major or in my college taking similar classes and we can form study groups and people would go to class together and things like that, which was really fun. Um, after that, I lived uh, in Dinkytown in my sorority house for two years, um, which was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot different than the dorms, but also um, not quite in an apartment. It was a nice transition. Um, and it was a great place to live surrounded by friends. Um, and then after that, I moved farther off campus, uh, kind of on the edge of uh, Northeast and Marcy Homes, there are a couple neighborhoods um, along the number two bus line. So I was able to take, even though I live fairly far off campus, I was able to take a bus that goes straight into the middle of campus. So that's been nice. So I lived on campus for half of my college experience uh, in uh, some of the residence halls, actually, that were mentioned, Frontier Hall and, and a new one, Centennial Hall. Uh, and that is where I met so many great friends that laid the foundation for friendships that I would have throughout the rest of my college experience, certainly into my adult life. The one thing I will add is once I moved off campus, I purchased the university's U-Pass, uh, a bus pass that made it very convenient to get on any metro transit bus here in the Twin Cities, uh, using that pass for unlimited rides at any point in time during the day, during the year. Uh, and that made it uh, very convenient to get to campus if I was running late to class and needed something faster than my bike or something faster than walking or running, uh, but also to get downtown to those concerts, to get to the theater, to get to the sporting events that I might be going to. Uh, highly recommend a U-Pass. It's a tremendous value for the amount you can use it uh, and the places that it can take you. Mm -hmm. I lived off campus. Um, it feels like it's on campus. There are so many apartments, houses, as I spoke briefly on a place called Dinky Town, but they're on campus. They may not just be one of the residence halls. And it was an incredible experience and you can still walk right to your classes and it made it really easy. There, there's so many different living options that may be off campus, but it really is right here within the University of Minnesota. Perfect, thank you. And Katie had mentioned living and learning communities. We actually have 23 living and learning communities. And one of the living and learning communities that we have is a program called At Home in Minnesota. And you do not have to belong to the living and learning community in order to participate in the program, but it's a great way for out-of-state students to get connected to other out-of-state students, as well as have a Minnesota mentor. And you get the opportunity to experience all those quintessential Midwestern 
Western Minnesota Bold North activities that you should be doing uh, during your four-year college process here. Anywhere from tater tot hot dish, which is a form of casserole, to apple picking, to ice skating, to ice hockey, uh, and possibly even ice fishing for those of you that are interested in sitting on the ice in January with a hole in a fishing pole and string. Um, or line, excuse me. Um, it looks like we have another question. So Maria, go ahead. Okay, we have a lot of great questions coming in from um, those of us tuning or those tuning in. One being about the climate. Um, what's it like living in Minnesota throughout the seasons? How is your adjustment? Perfect. I think Desiree, if you want to kick that one off, being from California. Yeah. Very happy to answer that one. It was a question I got a lot when I chose the University of Minnesota and my friends, roommates would ask where I'm from. And as soon as I said San Francisco area, they'd say, what? <laughs> um, listen, it was one of my fears coming to the Twin Cities was the cold, the climate, the winters. Um, I'll be very honest. It's something I should not have been so concerned about. You know, if you're tuning in from across the country, you're already looking at schools outside of your area and outside of your comfort zone. I did the whole California tour with all of my friends and all of my classmates. And I said, you know what, let me just try a Midwest tour. I have a really great four-year college experience and home is always there if and when I wanna go back. I just have chose not to go back. And I thought I would go right back to California. But it is amazing how many things there are to do here in the winters. Um, what an amazing, you know, to step out of being from the San Francisco area and be here for four years and have these really incredible experiences with others who have an experience or some of my great friends from the Midwest who are able to show me all these things. There's also an underground tunnel system here, which I always took advantage of on some of those really cold days. But honestly, what a great experience to have for four years. I was concerned about it and I really shouldn't have been. Perfect. Anybody else like to talk about the weather? Well, Nebraska is fairly similar. I'm sure I was fairly similar as well uh, to Minnesota, but um, not long after I graduated my undergrad, I moved out to Arizona. Um, I got down to the Phoenix area July 1st, and I was back up here the day after Thanksgiving. Um, I didn't like the heat. Uh, I, I loved everything about the Midwest. I loved the seasons. Uh, I loved the, the variety of clothing I was able to wear. Um, <laughs> I loved the fact that when I got back up here, it was 40 degrees, and I was like, oh, comfort, thank you. But um, <laughs> The weather isn't that bad. Yes, there will be cold days. There will be hot days. I think we have a heat wave coming up this weekend and we'll have, you know, negative 10. That's that's fine. And what it does is it it just makes you a little bit stronger and you learn how to tolerate so many more things. And you realize that really the weather is the least of your worries. There's so much more to focus on than the weather. I want to add one very quick thing and anyone coming from, you know, south or west just because you may experience it here. My first spring um, in Minnesota, when it hit like the first 45 degree day, and suddenly I walk, I'm walking to class and there are people in flip flops, t-shirts, shorts, and I'm like, what the heck is going on here? I'm still in my sweatshirt, um, but now as soon as it hits 48 degrees, I'm also in my flip flops, so. <laughs> Awesome. I love that. I, I as well. I am yeah. also in flip flops around that temperature. Uh, ben, I know you've lived all over the country. And so for you, coming to the University of Minnesota was a little bit out of your comfort zone as well. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about how you acclimated here? So I grew up in a number of locations, primarily around uh, the Midwest and the southeastern United States. I uh, came to Minnesota from uh, the state of Virginia, like I mentioned, uh, in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains there. So I had seen snow. I'd experienced major snowstorms living in uh, parts of Missouri and, and in the, the mountains there. Um, and so that was nothing new to me. I think the major adjustment for Minnesota coming from some of these other places wasn't so much the cold. It was really uh, the length and how long winter can last here. But like others have mentioned, there are plenty of ways to, to work with that and to, to be a part of that, be it fully embracing it and, and taking advantage of winter activities, be it uh, hockey or uh, you know ice fishing, uh, skiing or cross country skiing, things like that. But plenty of opportunities to uh, huddle inside and, and take advantage of some of those indoor activities that we've mentioned, be it concert venues, uh, be it professional sports, be it theater, uh, plenty of those options as well that happen year round 
here in the Twin Cities. So again, there is, like we mentioned, uh, something for everyone all year round, and it just depends on how you'd like to work with that. Uh, but there are lots of ways to, again, embrace the culture of winter and, and embrace the culture of Minnesota here uh, throughout the year. Great, thank you. And for those of you that are avid bicyclists throughout the year, the University or the, the Minneapolis St. Paul does have the most bike friendly city and we do have bikers year round and there's plenty of independent bike shops throughout Minneapolis St. Paul and right around the University of Minnesota campus that can help you be a winter biker if you're determined to bike in January in Minnesota. Maria, do we have any other questions? Yes, sorry. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we have several. Um, one question actually asked, did anyone on the panel go out of Minnesota for maybe a summer internship or perhaps you could touch on a study abroad experience? Katie, would you like to touch or uh, who did a study abroad experience? I believe Kittrick did. Okay, perfect. So as a graduate student, we did a, uh, a sports study abroad program. We went to Italy and Switzerland. We started in Rome and worked our way north. Anything that had to do with sports, um, the, the Coliseum, um, Coviciano, which is where the national the Italian national soccer team plays and practices. Um, we went to Lausanne in Switzerland, which is where the IOC is. We watched a women's 19U game in Nyon, Switzerland, and uh, we went to uh, I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation because it's been a while. Uh, La Griada, uh, I totally mispronounced that, but it's uh, it's it's like the 18U national basketball and volleyball for uh, for Italy in Milan, maybe or Treviso, I forget which. But yeah, so I had that opportunity. It was a fantastic opportunity. The only bummer is that it was only two weeks. Um, I could have spent the whole two weeks in Rome because there was so much to look at and to learn, um, but. The great thing about that is that it kept me on task. Um, I was able to do a small presentation. Uh, two of the women in my group actually had to stay in Rome for an extra day and give a give a speech at a national, uh, an international conference. Um, and so that was really cool for them. They were our only two PhD students um, with the program, but it was an absolutely wonderful, um, wonderful thing to be a part of. Perfect. And actually, when I was a sophomore, one of my many pre-majors that I had while I was here at the University of Minnesota was uh, marketing and advertising. And I had actually been accepted to study abroad for a three-week program that was going to take place in Ireland, examining their marketing uh, and advertising processes and procedures uh, and trends in comparison to those of the United States. And unfortunately, I made the decision not to go, even though I was accepted to the program and I pulled out right before going. And honestly, it's my biggest mistake of my undergraduate career. I really wish I took advantage of studying abroad. We have over 300 programs in 80 different countries, and we actually have the ability to build and study abroad to nearly every one of our majors. So any of you that are interested in studying abroad, we strongly encourage you to start having those conversations with your academic advisors right away. And we also have freshman seminars. So for those of you that are looking to do a study abroad program right away as a first year student, you do have that as an option as well too. So there's endless opportunities within our study abroad department. We really do set the bar. Speaking of other opportunities, for those of you that maybe worked on campus, do you wanna tell us what a little bit what it was like having a job on campus? So I held numerous positions on campus. Uh, in my first year, I worked in uh, the university bookstore for a period of time. I also, uh, as I mentioned, worked in a, in a campus research lab uh, and also worked for our office of admissions, giving campus tours uh, throughout the year, uh, primarily over the summers. Uh, and so finding those campus jobs was a very simple process. Uh, the university has a great job board that maintains a list of all of the open positions on campus. Uh, there are positions in multiple fields, some that might relate directly to your major, like a research-based position, but also jobs that may be similar to the ones that you held in, in high school, be it in food service or retail, uh, land care, things like that, are all things that happen here on campus as well. Um, the uh, pay at the university from when I was a student was very competitive, uh, and certainly the location couldn't be beat. Having a job on campus that I could go to in between classes, uh, even if I just had an hour between classes, I could stop into the research lab 
lab, uh, catch up on some work there, and then be off the next minute to a class that was in an adjacent building. Uh, so that was something that was very convenient and, and very attractive of that job on campus. So I would definitely encourage you to the students who are looking for extra income, be it for uh, a little spending money for the weekend, or if you're looking to supplement your own education uh, finances, it can also be a great thing for that through work study and other programs. So job on campus is highly recommended. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Maria, do we have any more questions? Perfect. Yeah, several questions are coming in. Um, one is about the location of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, I'm going to pair a couple together here. One student asked, when people go home for breaks, were the out-of-state students left alone? <laughs> and another part of that question is, is Minnesota or Minneapolis and St. Paul an affordable place to live? Are there things to do for free or low cost? Great question. All right. I know you all are going to have something to contribute to this question. So who would like to start? Uh, as a freshman, I went home other than winter break. I went home once. Um, and it just kind of confirmed for me that I had made the right choice to attend the University of Minnesota and to grow myself um, and to be behind some things that uh, might not necessarily have held me back, but allowed me to really advance myself as a person and to advance my education. Um, but otherwise, being from central Nebraska, it's an eight hour trip home for me to drive. So I did that every summer, uh, once or twice a summer, I would go home for Christmas. Um, and I always stayed up here for Thanksgiving and uh, when, you know, a fraternity brother or uh, somebody, a girl in a sorority would be like, hey, come to our place for Thanksgiving. And I'm like, awesome. Also the first time I ever had turkey for Thanksgiving because that's not what my family did. So that was neat. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it was, it, I stayed on campus every single summer. Uh, I found jobs uh, off, just off campus or, you know, on the Metro, I was an umpire. So I, I was able to get myself all over the place and really enjoyed my time. So I tended to go home for a lot of breaks. Um, my hometown and I was only about five hours from here. And uh, after my freshman year, I brought a car up because I, had a parking available which was not particularly common but um really great for me so i would drive home uh for thanksgiving uh and winter break um but other than that um excluding my break over the summer i really didn't go home that often um i made a made friends with a lot of other out-of-state students and we hung out on the weekends together when some of the in-state students would go home for the weekend um but I didn't really notice anyone getting left out. I know I had friends who would bring uh, other friends to their house for Thanksgiving, um, drive them to their house in Minnesota and share their, th their family Thanksgiving with a friend because they didn't want their friends to be left out. So I always thought that was really sweet. Um, and that was a really great, great thing for everybody. Um, in terms of low cost things to do around here, um, the beaches that I mentioned uh, are all public access, all the beaches on the lake. So as long as you can get there, um, which would be like a $2 bus ride or a couple bucks in parking, um, those are all great thing, great places to go to. Um, I think the sculpture garden is free access also, so you can walk around there. Um, you know, you can walk around downtown. There's St. Anthony, Maine is a really pretty place to walk around for free. Um, so there are a lot of places that you can just go and hang out for free. And I'll just quick add, you had asked about if you feel like, you know, be alone here for holidays if you're not going home or for breaks. Absolutely not. I can assure you. I, coming from California, I mean, the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport, it's 15 minutes from here and it's a main hub. I could hop on a quick three and a half hour flight home to California. And when I started, I thought I would do it a lot. And I did it so much less than I thought because the things you're able to do here over the breaks, you can study abroad just over interim, you know, just over the holiday break. Um, the um, outreach projects you could do. I did one over spring break. I'd go home with friends who lived nearby and sometimes I'd go home and it's really easy um, to find things to do on the breaks if you're here. It'll be amazing the amount of people you meet who will invite you <laughs> places. So it, it's really nice. I was also someone who had, was almost necessary to fly back and forth between the university and home. Uh, that, like Desiree said, the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport is a tremendous uh, home base 
uh, as a Delta hub, you can fly to almost anywhere uh, with either no layovers or just a single layover. Uh, so it's very convenient and, and in most cases very cost efficient uh, to be able to do that. The one thing that I will add to all of what's been said, because I agree 100%, is that on the weekends it might seem like maybe folks are going home for a weekend or something like that, but I think that's not necessarily the case at all. Uh, when I was a student here, I had plenty of friends that I would hang out with over the weekend, both locals as well as those other fellow out-of-state or greater Minnesota folks, uh, and you know would find things to get into around campus, certainly in the in the downtown metro areas and things like that. So uh, definitely not uh, a commuter campus, so to speak. There are plenty of things on campus, plenty of people, activities, things that are happening uh, throughout the week, including evenings and weekends that I would highly encourage of all of our students to, to explore and to get involved with. Thank you, everyone. And I would absolutely have to agree and echo what everybody said. Two of my best friends actually were from New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and they spent multiple Thanksgivings with my family 20 minutes away in Apple Valley. And actually, there were a few holidays where I actually followed them back home. So if you're not careful and you make friends with a lot of students from Minnesota, you might actually have them flying out to see you and your family over the holidays. And so that was a great way to really be engaged with them. Yes, and Kit actually okay. came to my house one time for Thanksgiving as well, too. <laughs> so yeah, so there's there's been a lot of individuals that have been in my parents' house. So uh, but you make friends with individuals from all four corners of, of uh, the United States. And so you'll actually find that there's a lot of homes and doors that open for you as an out-of-state student within Minnesota and within the Midwest. And then also you'll end up opening your doors to some of your friends you meet from across the nation and around the world here at the University of Minnesota. As for free activities, there's a lot of activities that take place through our Kaufman Student Union. Uh, movie nights, different types of clubs, sports and activities, concerts such as our spring jam initiatives or spring jam activities that take place in the spring and homecoming. We actually just came off of our pride, city pride um, for our GLBTQ plus community. And that was a big celebration that took place throughout Minneapolis, St. Paul, and throughout the state of Minnesota, where many individuals were participating. So whether you're on or off campus, there's festivals, movies, music, a lot of free activities that take place throughout our Minneapolis and St. Paul park systems. Maria, do we have any other questions? Yes, I have a good question as we kind of wrap up in the next 10 minutes or so. Someone actually asked, did Minnesota or the University of Minnesota challenge you as a person to help you grow and develop? That's an awesome question. Thank you to whoever asked that. We'll go ahead and have everybody answer that. Let's go ahead and start with Katie. Um, so the biggest challenge I had at the University of Minnesota was actually um, the beginning of my sophomore year, I had a really, really intense bout of homesickness. I wanted to go home. I was tired of being here. I like didn't really, my roommate at the time was a great friend, but like not a good, not a good roommate for me. Our living styles were completely different. So I was just like, and I, I think I was having a hard time in classes too. And I was just, it was not a good semester. I was not particularly happy. And I was at that point um, really upset that I was so far away from home that my parents couldn't come like come see me or I couldn't go home easily. Um, so that was a really big challenge for me. And I learned from that, that I need to make sure I take care of myself. Um, I learned what I needed in a roommate and that my living situation is actually really something that affects my day-to-day -day life. If I'm not happy when I get home, if I can't relax when I get home, then I'm, I'm a mess. <laughs> So I really learned a lot about myself and how I need to live to be happy and successful from that time. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. Who'd like to go next? I felt like I was pushed and challenged in so many different ways. First, just making the decision to um, go to a place where you know no one, um, a different part of the country. But I was pushed academically. Um, I was pushed to in making new friendships, which is something that I'll have for the rest of my life after being here. My professors pushed me, my advisors pushed me, my classmates pushed me. I learned so much and took away so much. And, you know, it takes that first step in saying you're going to go have this really unique, diverse, different college experience. And you really realize what it does for you. It's done so much. 
Uh, again, agree on, on both counts. Uh, certainly was a brand new experience to move, uh, you know, hundreds of miles away from my built-in support system that I had with my family, my parents, my brother and sister. Uh, and so to explore that on my own here uh, was a new experience in being able to search out things for myself and be very independent. Uh, my folks were never more than a phone call away, which was always very nice to have that and to be able to ask their advice and their experiences. But also, as was mentioned, uh, you build such a great support system here locally, be it with the professional staff that you might work with and your faculty, your academic advisors, other supports, but really also your peers and your friends, their families. Uh, again, there have been so many people that I've gotten to meet because of the university that I now consider great friends and family uh, that I certainly couldn't live without now uh, as an adult here in the Twin Cities. So definitely uh, plenty of things to adjust to, but also so much growth that occurs because of that adjustment. Um, I had a couple of big challenges. Um, one was just growing to accept other people. Um, Nebraska can be pretty conservative. And so it was nice to be pushed in a way where um, I met people of different cultures, of different races, of different uh, sexual orientations. And so that really opened up my eyes and helped me out a lot. And then also sophomore year, um, I had an issue. And um, my fraternity's academic advisor was actually the guy who pushed me the most. Um, I started looking at transferring actually. And, and I mentioned Arizona and I looked at Arizona State and he looked at me one day and he said, you're not going down to Arizona until you have a degree. And I kind of went, okay. <laughs> and I did. And it, I, about a month after I graduated from my undergrad, I went down to Arizona and obviously I moved back. But um, so those were the two areas where I was really pushed. Perfect. Thank you. Maria, it looks like we have another question. Yes. So someone asked in regards to the name of this webinar, did you find that Minnesota nice was a distinct cultural difference from your home state and perhaps a definition and example there? Great. Let's go ahead and have Desi kick off this one. <laughs> yes. Minnesota is nice. Um, not that people in California are not. I, my entire family for the most part is in California. And I heard the term coming here, Minnesota nice, and it could not be more true because one of my first days here when we decided to take a trip to the grocery store and I walked in to the grocery store and a woman greeted me oh hello and hi person we go to the bakery or one of the departments and it was a 10 minute conversation oh you're just gonna love it here I have a daughter if you have any questions my dad and I really couldn't believe we just how friendly everyone was. I saw it on campus, I saw it in the Twin Cities, I see it in my work right now, but really some of the most amazing people in Minnesota nice is very true. I experienced it from the first moment I got here. Perfect, thank you. Anybody have something they wanna contribute? Ben? I guess. One thing that I would compare Minnesota nice to is, is Southern hospitality. Uh, having grown up in a lot of different locations in the Southeast, uh, you know, Southern hospitality is a very real thing. Uh, and so is Minnesota nice being able to experience that, like Desiree said, in, you know, your grocery store in Target, uh, you know, just walking around the streets of, of Minneapolis and St. Paul. It is something that, you know, invades all of the different spaces that we have. And I think that as you get to know people and as you, you know, find yourself here, you'll find that that's something that's very real uh, and something you'll experience very, very quickly firsthand. Perfect. Thank you. And I think we'll go ahead and ask one more questions of our panelists. So if you all wouldn't mind just telling us if you had a piece of advice to give any of our students who are currently going through the college search process, what would that piece of advice be? And ultimately, what was your deciding factor? Why Minnesota? <clears throat> I think you're all already taking the first step in looking at um, national places. I mean, you're here, you're from all over the country. And I think that's really important. Like I had said earlier, I toured a lot of schools and I fell in love with the University of Minnesota campus when I visited the summer before my senior year. Um, <clears throat> it was beautiful. I fell in love with the Twin Cities, the opportunities. And um, I never looked back and you can very well come, go somewhere else, be there for four years, have this really amazing brand new opportunity and go back home or anywhere else in the country and do work because that's what you'll be prepared for here. Um, but really just taking that chance and being here, it was the best decision I've made. 
one piece of advice that I would give to the students who are in, their, in the midst of their college experience is to clearly do your research. You're doing that by you know, being a part of us, uh, being a part of our panel here today. But part of that is also visits. Part of that is looking at more so than just the university, but looking at the surrounding community uh, and really figuring out the best fit. Uh, academics is a huge part, obviously, of your college experience. It's one of the central pieces. But there is so much more to your college experience than just the academics in the classroom. Uh, you'll find that through student organizations on campus, through jobs on campus, but also off-campus opportunities. Those are all very big parts uh, of the process. Um, the determining factor for me uh, came back to academics when I was a student. Uh, again, looking at a very highly ranked engineering program and the University of Minnesota fit the bill uh, for that. Uh, and so that was something that was highly important for me, something that I really valued in making sure that when I graduated and left the university, I was going to have an education that really meant something, uh, not just to myself, but when I was looking for other positions and graduate schools that I had an experience that was very transferable to all of these places. So again, opportunity is a big part uh, of the college experience and something I'd highly recommend for people to explore. Uh, for me, I think my biggest deciding factor was definitely the location here in the Twin Cities. Um, that was a, a big factor for me in just searching for schools in the first place um, because I really wanted to get that big city experience. Um, and that's a large proportion, large part of the reason why I decided not to go to the Big Ten school that was in my home state. Um, it's a University of Iowa is a great school, but I really wanted to be in a in a city and not a college town. Um, it seemed like it would be the environment that would be the best fit for me. And it really has really has been. I, I've i loved my time in the Twin Cities, um, especially living here after graduation has been uh, a lot of fun and really amazing. Um, the other thing I really liked about the University of Minnesota was the uniqueness of the College of Biological Sciences. Um, there are a lot of active learning environments and a lot of creative ways they use to, to teach biology and to teach research. Um, and I was very attracted to that as well. Uh, I looked at really schooling two schools. I looked at McAllister College, which is over in St. Paul, so very, very close to us, um, and the University of Minnesota. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. Um, I do that now. Um, I didn't for a full 10 years. I worked in the service industry, which was great, uh, especially once I finished school, because there are so many opportunities to work in the service industry. But um, I didn't know then, but about five years after I graduated, what I realized is that as I was talking with my student athletes as they were getting ready to finish high school and figure out where they wanted to go. Here's the thing about going to the University of Minnesota versus maybe a, a smaller liberal arts college that you might be looking at or a smaller parochial school that you're looking at. Um, University of Minnesota has national cachet. You can leave this state and go to Oregon. You can go to Texas, Florida, Maryland, Maine. It doesn't matter. People know that the University of, big, of Minnesota is a Big Ten school. That's not just about athletics that is about our academics as well and what our academics have to say is that we put a lot of time we put a lot of energy we put a lot of effort into everything that we do here and we you're really able to get that as far as the minneapolis st paul metro area um there's so much to do we have all the four major sports um and they've added obviously women's basketball and now soccer and so now we have six major pro sports teams here and so that was great the arts the theater the lakes um, the surrounding metropolitan area, there is so much to do all the time that it's uh, amazing how easy it is to get yourself kind of lost and just enjoy everything while enjoying your college experience. Perfect. Thank you. Well, that's about it for our alumni panel. Thank you to all of our students who chimed in from across the nation. We really appreciate you participating in this virtual panel. It's been not only a great experience for me and hopefully for you, but also for our panelists. Thank you again to all of you for your contributions and your support. And lastly, thank you again to Maria as well as John Ruzik from the Alumni Association for their support and partnership. We look forward to being able to connecting with you soon. For those of you that are on the West Coast, Rachel Tanner is your admissions representative located in San Diego. If you're on the East Coast, Brianne Kane is your admissions counselor who located in New York. And if you're in the Southern US, you actually have Marcel Zay, who is your admissions counselor located in the Dallas area. If you're learning, if you'd like to learn more about who your admissions counselor is, you're welcome to reach out to the admissions office. And again, my name is Ashley Harville, and I am happy to help any of you with any other questions you have that have sprung from this panel. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you in a city near your hometown or on campus, hopefully this summer or fall. And thank you, Ash.
Thank you. Thank you. Go Gophers. Go Gophers. Woo!